Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple physics-based conveyor belt system in the Unity game engine. For this tutorial I'll be scripting with C-sharp in Visual Studios 2017. Uh, this is a beginner tutorial so it won't be very difficult. And I have all the steps required to get this belt up and running timestamped in the description. So this is what the belt should do when we're done scripting it. So it should move any rigid bodies from one end of the belt to the other end. And if you have multiple belts, you can create your own little conveyor belt system and have these rigid bodies going from one belt to the next. So we'll start just by importing the first person character package so you can walk around and look at your belt and how it functions. So go up to where it says assets near the top, select import package, we want to import the characters package. For me, I have nothing to import because I already have this package imported into my project. Uh, for you, there's going to be a lot of stuff in here. Make sure everything is checked and then just select import. And that'll turn for a bit and then you'll see a folder in your assets called standard assets. Click on that and we want to go to characters first person character prefabs and we want to select the first person controller and just drag that into our scene and then just select this green arrow which is our y-axis for the position of this object and just move it up so that it's not clipping into the floor <clears throat> I actually don't need this character because I already have mine in the scene so I'll show you how to set up this little scene here with primitives. So we'll go up beside where the assets tab was and select game object, 3D object and select plane. We'll set that to the origin by going up to the inspector tab, find where it says position under transform and set all those values to 0, 0, 0. And we'll just move it by selecting the blue arrow away from this floor. And a shortcut to switch between uh, translate, rotate, and scale is W for translate, E for rotate, and R for scale. So we want to scale this, so that's about the same size as this one. So just select the middle white box here, and that will uniform scale it. Now we'll apply a different material to this object. So right click. In your assets folder, I recommend making folders for your materials and scripts. Keep everything organized. So just right click, create, select material. I'll call this floor mat. You can call it whatever you want. And if you go up to the inspector window under main maps, you'll see albedo to the right of that. There's a little color box. Just select on that and make your floor whatever color you want. I'm just going to go with a darker gray kind of color and then just click on that material in your folder drag into your scene and that'll apply to whatever you're hovering over which we want to be our floor all right now we'll start setting up the belt here so go up up to where we got the plane game object 3d object and select a cube this time we'll move that to the origin again zero 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 move it back over here again Press R to switch to scale again, and we'll just scale it out on the X axis lengthways. So you just click and drag. We'll do the same thing on the Z axis for the width of the belt, and we'll make it a little bit thinner, right about there. Now press E to switch to rotate, and you just grab onto one of these lines that's around these the sphere here. This is your Z axis, this is your X, this is your Y. And I'm just pressing Control Z to undo. If you hold down Control while you're rotating, it'll snap rotate, which I'm going to use for that angle of the belt. Just delete that. So we'll name, rename this belt so we know which one's our belt. 
and I will create an object for objects that will that the belt will move. So we'll call this let's call it crate. This belt will move crates. And we'll just put it on top of our belt. Probably scale it down a little bit. And while you have an object selected, if you press Control D, that'll duplicate the object. So I'm just going to make a bunch of these to make this a little more fun. You can duplicate multiple objects that are selected, make it easier to make a bunch of objects. Now we'll select all of these crate objects, go down to Add Component, select or type in rigid body and select that. What a rigid body is, is it makes your object pretty much physics based. Uh, all these values should be fine. So now we want to make one more object in our scene. It's going to be just an empty game object. So create empty. And what this empty game object is going to be is it's just going to be a position for the endpoint of our belt where objects will move towards. So just move it to the end of your belt. Make sure it's a little bit off the end of the belt so that objects won't stop here. They'll fall off the end of the belt. Up a bit. And we'll rename this and call it endpoint to be more accurate. And you want to drag that endpoint in your hierarchy up onto your belt, and that'll make that a child of the belt object. So now, wherever you move this belt, that endpoint will follow wherever it goes. And one more thing we have to do by default, primitives have a collider attached to them. Because we made a cube, this one has a box collider attached to it, which is good. That means that these objects here will collide with this and stop moving. But we also want to create another box collider for a trigger. So for this box collider, make sure you have is trigger checked on. And this trigger is basically going to say any objects that are within this trigger are going to move. And we want them to move towards that endpoint that we just set up. So let's move the center of this trigger up so that it's just a little bit above the belt. So you can see the trigger here, the green box. And then we also have our box collider underneath that. So now if I press play and go over on this side, you can see the boxes have dropped and they've stopped on the belt because it has that one box collider on it. But it doesn't do anything because we haven't scripted it to move across the belt when it's in the trigger. But we'll do that right now. So let's go, uh, I recommend making a scripts folder and we'll make a new script, create C sharp script. We'll call it conveyor belt. Open that up in Visual Studios or whatever programming software program you're using. And the first thing we want to do is make our var variables. So we'll make a public game object for our belt. We'll make a transform for the endpoint object. And we'll make just a public variable, a public float for the speed that the object will move at when on this belt. So we don't need either of these right now start or update. What we do need is another built-in Unity function called onTriggerStay. So make sure you have on, trigger, and stay capitalized. And what this function does is any objects, any objects that are within this trigger that we set up on our belt, this trigger here, will do stuff when it's in this trigger. If it's not in the trigger, it's not going to do anything. One thing before we get back to coding, I'm just going to move my character over here, over on this side.
Okay, and for the parameter, we want a collider called other, which is the object that is in this trigger, which is those boxes. And now we're going to do the line of code that's actually going to move this object. And the good thing about this is it's only one line of code. So we want to say other dot transform dot position, which is the position of the crate that's on the belt, equals vector three dot move towards. And what this function does is it moves an object from one point, one vector three, to another point. So we're going to move it from our crate's current position to the end point of the belt using the speed variable that we set up. So that means we need our crate position, the other one, the target position will be the end point dot position, and the speed times time dot delta time which makes things move smoothly that's what time dot delta time is for <coughs> and if we've set this up correctly uh, we'll go back to unity that's just gonna load up for a second because we uh, made a new script and if we select on our belt you can click on your script and just drag it onto your inspector window on your belt object and we have to fill out these fields now so we have our belt we'll apply that here our endpoint here and we'll set the speed at 2 for now and if everything's set up correctly this should work let's give it a test yep worked on the first try so you see it moves these objects up the belt and they should fall off the end It's that easy, one line of code. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. And if you make multiple belts like this, so press Ctrl D, duplicate. I'm just going to snap this back to zero. Drag it over. Rotate it around. Just so that it's underneath this other belt. I'll show you how they can be connected. Make this one be rotated as well. This can also move the player if you're standing in it. And they'll move from one belt to the next. Sometimes they fall off, so you'll have to make some little hoppers here to catch them. And they'll keep going, and then they'll keep falling, keep rolling. And to change the speed, you just select your belt that has the script attached to it. You can change it to whatever you want, make it five or increase the number to make it go faster lower the number to make it go slower to give see if it's faster there's less of a chance they're going to fall to the next belt and that'll do it that's all it takes to get this belt up and going uh, i hope this tutorial was helpful thanks for watching uh, if you have any questions or any errors uh, comment below if you're getting a errors in your console window be sure to put those in the comments that'll help a lot and i'll try to help you as much as i can and yeah thanks for watching guys see you